This is a short video to introduce uh, a program that will compute effect sizes and variance from multi-level studies. The issue that we need to address is how to compute an effect size from multi-level studies. We usually work with the standardized mean difference, which is defined as the mean difference divided by the standard deviation within groups. For example, suppose that we run a simple randomized study where students are randomized to either treatment or control and the outcome is the student's score on the SAT test. Suppose that the difference in means is 50 points. The standard deviation of the SAT scores is 100 points. So the standardized mean difference is 50 over 100 or 0 0.50. Now, consider what happens if we, if we use a multi-level design. For example, we might run a study where students are nested within classes and we randomize classes to treatment or control. If the difference between conditions is again 50 points, then the standardized mean difference should again be 0 0.50. However, the kinds of computations that are typically performed are likely to yield an effect size closer to 1.0, which is incorrect. The reason is as follows. While the standard deviation of SAT scores for individual students is 100, the standard deviation of class means for the SAT will be much smaller, perhaps 50. When we perform an analysis of the two-level study, the unit of analysis is the class, and therefore, the standard deviation employed in the analysis is the standard deviation of the class means, which is 50. While this yields the correct p-value for comparing the two groups, it yields an incorrect estimate of the effect size. Specifically, if we divide the mean difference by this standard deviation, we get 50 over 50, which yields an effect size of 1.0 rather, rather than the intended effect size of 0 0.50. The same idea applies if we have a three-level study, where the students are, are nested within classes and classes are nested within schools, and we randomize schools to conditions. In this case, the analysis will use the standardized deviation of the school means, which may be 25. The effect size will be computed as 50 over 25, which is 2.0. Thus, if the actual effect size is identical in all three studies, the computed effect size will be 0 0.50 in one study, 1.0 in another, and 2.0 in a third. So this is the problem that we need to address. If the standardized mean difference is defined as the raw mean difference divided by the standard deviation of student scores, then we need a mechanism to compute the effect size based on this definition regardless of the study design. This mechanism would allow us to enter the data reported for any of these study designs and compute the intended effect size, which here is 0 0.50 in all three cases. The issues are discussed in the paper Effect Sizes in Cluster Randomized Designs by Larry Hedges, published in the Journal of Educational and Behavioral Statistics. The issues are also explored in a chapter by Larry Hedges in the Handbook of Research Synthesis and Meta-Analysis. While these papers and others provide the formulas for computing effect sizes for multi-level designs, it turns out that the formulas are difficult to use in practice. Even when the published analysis is correct and provides all the relevant information, the formulas are difficult to implement. In practice, there's an additional problem in that the published analysis may be incorrect. For example, it may have ignored the impact of clustering and may have reported only some of the relevant statistics. Therefore, we need a mechanism that, al that allows us to start with the published report and compute the effect size and variance. That's what this program does. It works with the study designs shown here and others. It works with the various kinds of analyses that researchers employ to analyze multi-level data. And it's able to correct for the kinds of mistakes that are sometimes made when analyzing multi-level data. So let's have a look at how the program works. Because the program works with any number of study designs, the first thing that we have to do is specify which design we are working with. Initially, we see a design over here where we have students nested within classes. Uh, I click Next, and we see that there are options for two-level designs and for three-level designs. If I click three-level designs, now we're looking, for example, at students within classes within schools. At the next step, uh, I can name each of these. For example, rather than students within classes within schools, I might say that I'm talking about classes within schools within districts. And as I type those names in over here, they're going to be applied back into the, uh, into the program. Uh, I can tell the program that I randomized schools, which I've done over here, or I've randomized classes, in which place schools are blocked, or 
of randomized students, in which case schools and classes are blocked. As I set these options, the program is going to then present me with the relevant uh, options as we uh, proceed into, into the later screens. Let's assume over here that schools were randomized. And finally over here, uh, I can tell the program that the analysis that we are looking at, the analysis that might have been reported in the paper, was one that ignored clusters, uh, or was one that analyzed clusters, or was one that used an HLM analysis. I'm going to choose Analyzed Clusters. I click Next. I have some additional options over here. Uh, I can choose to enter the F-statistic, or the T-value, or the P-value, or the D-value, or the means and standard deviations, all of these based on the analysis that was performed um, you, uh, comparing the, um, the clusters. Uh, I enter the F statistic, the number of schools is 10, two classes per school, 10 students per class. I have the ICC for schools and the ICC for classes. I click Compute, and the program shows me that the naive uh, D value that I might have computed is 1.0, whereas the D value that I, I really intended to get was 0.49. Uh, the naive estimate of the variance was 0.22. The correct estimate of the variance is 0.06, and so on for the various other statistics. I'd like to point out that, uh, that this program was funded um, by the IES under their SBIR program. The contract manager was uh, Edward Metz, and we're very grateful to them. If you have any questions about this program, please contact me. My name is Michael Borenstein. My email is biostat100 at gmail.com, and thank you very much for uh, taking the time.